Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Hi, everybody. I just also, again, want to say thank you so much for all of you that could make it tonight. I know some of you had to go travel far and wide. We had employees traveling as far as Australia. Thank you. But we also had associates traveling as far as Texas. You know where you are? And other parts of America. And also we had a customer traveling as far as India. Thank you. So we went from Science Museum last year to the birth of rock and roll this year. Let's see what happens next year. I'm excited. Speaking of rock and roll, I just have to make one safety announcement. As you can see, we have asked to remove all the security bars that usually go around the stage here. So I really have to ask all my fans, do not swarm the stage to try and stay, take my shirt or something. Thank you. When you look at everything in the world today, it's easy to be gloomy. You know, whether you look at inflation, cost of living, climate crisis, maybe a war soon between the US and China, a war in Ukraine and others. All of this feels like totally outside of our control. I mean, maybe beyond exercising your, exercising your right to vote, but even that is sometimes tenuous. When a guy that sits on the Kremlin can come and do a war in Ukraine, and that means that all of us have to pay a heating bill. It's much harder. You can feel like despondent. You know, you can feel like things are done to us, and we can't influence them no matter what we do. And it's the same in business, right? We went through this period where huge amount of digital transformation was brought forward by the pandemic, right? The whole industry benefited from this. It was gross, gross, gross. You could not find enough people to do the work. And now we're coming out of this phase and go from feast to famine. Now supply exceeds demand. We have to hunker down. All the organizations that have overextended themselves, they do layoffs. We are now staring stagnation and recession in the face. And again, it's a brutal shift. And again, it's kind of done to us. And it feels outside of our control. On that note, let's not forget, it's not just happening to us. It's also happening to our customers, right? They are mightily stressed. They've been asked to do more with less. So now is not the time to try and sell them that 20 million pound dev platform. We really have to show them empathy. So it's easy to forget in that context how lucky, how truly blessed we all are here as Simon was saying before, as a group of professionals. We were born in that digital revolution, at the heart of it. And it's not just like once in a lifetime thing, it's once in a human history thing. I mean, I remember my father could only have done what I've done if he was himself the actual inventor of the computer. Right? I remember being a kid, helping him work out how to use Lotus 1, 2, 3, for people that know what that is, on his laptop that he barely touched. Our jobs didn't really exist 70 years ago, right? The commercial computer as an information system is only 60 years old. Commercial internet is 30 years old, right? The, the iPhone, that iPhone is, 30, is 15 years old. Well, not that very iPhone, but you get what I'm saying. Well, so, and it's not just that we were born at the right time. It's that we are the experts, actor, making it all happen, that revolution, right? Collectively, in this room, in the network, we represent what good looks like when it comes to digital design and engineering in the world today. And we are at the heart of many transformation, big and small, in all our customers, and we're making big impacts in all those organizations. So we have this huge amount of experience and expertise that is in high demand. I mean, despite the peaks and troughs of our industry, every single person in this room is going to be much easier for you to find another job than most people in the world out there. And I would say that I believe that our experience and our expertise 
will stay in demand for the foreseeable future. And yes, I say that no matter what ChatGPT says and the mass hysteria around it. I mean, if anything, with AI making software cheap, cheaper and easier to maintain and build, I really believe there's going to be a renaissance of bespoke software versus package software. And for what you know, we'll have more work than we ever knew before. I think I see a world where the quality of a very few highly skilled, highly productive individual will matter more than ever. I think the consultancy that should be worried are more the ones that sell army of people, that sell repeatable process, maintenance, fixed price for tasks that are easily prescribed. But not for a consultant like ours that sells expertise. But you didn't come here to listen to the rambling of someone that just listened to one podcast about AI. So the good thing is, tonight we have somebody who actually knows what she's talking about. And she's going to come on stage soon, so I'll move on so we can listen to, to Nidna Sheik soon. So as I was saying, I do think it's really important to remember how blessed we are as a group. And I would go even further. The people in this room, more than just experience and skills, I think they got talent. We got talent. And not just in Britain. We have a tremendous amount of talent gathered in this room, talented individuals from all over the world. So I guess the real question, the big question to ask ourselves at this stage is, as someone else once asked, what do I do with my talent? Do I keep it for myself? Do I bury it in the ground so it's safe? Or do I try to grow it? Do I share it? Do I pull my talent all together with others so that we can achieve greater things? Do I try to make the most of the talent I got? So, you know, I can look back and say, I didn't squander my talent. I made it count. And how best do I do that? And I think that's where equal experts has a role to play. We want to be this network, this haven, where people can bring their talent in without being afraid of being taken advantage of or afraid that the talent will be constrained, controlled, eroded, squashed. You know, where instead people are confident that their talent will be harnessed, recognized, magnified, where we can build on each other's talent. At every conference, it's becoming kind of a tradition that I come back with a new metaphor for the haven, for the, for the network. So I talked about a meadow. I talked about a port. But I think we can all see the haven as a field, you know, at a fertile ground, fertile ground where we can all nurture and grow our talent. So how do we bring this to the next level? How do we combine all our talents more effectively so we can have an even greater impact with our customers? Where it's not just about talented individuals, but where the whole is truly greater than the parts. And I think we need to start with a bit of self-reflection. We need to start by better understanding what is the service we actually provide to our customer when we bring all our talents together? We need to better understand what is the value we bring. Is it more than the lines of code we write? You know, no matter how perfect they are, even if it's functional Scala. Is it, is it the tickets that we process? Is it the time you spend at your desk doing tasks? Do we believe that we are working with a customer to reach a certain outcome? Do we believe that we are paid to reach that outcome? Or do we believe we are paid just for the hours we bill? Are we just selling our time 
Or are we selling something extra? And I'm saying this because there's no point trying to combine our talents. I mean, there's no point trying to explain to a customer what value we bring collectively if first we are not all first crystal clear about what it means ourselves. And I think it's worth making the effort, both individually and collectively, to better understand what is the actual service? What is the actual value we provide today? Then, we can look at the service and the value we want to provide tomorrow and how we do it better. How can we be more intentful when we build teams so we have a high-performing, talented team and not just talented individuals? How can we be more intentional in the experience we deliver our customers so they can truly see the impact of these talents we pull together? How are we more deliberate about learning? Not just to grow our individual talents, but also to grow as an organization, as a network. Learning from our mistakes, learning from others, adapting to changing customer needs and new technology so we can stay relevant. I think now is the right time to try and answer all those questions. It is the natural next step, I think, in the evolution of equal experts. If we do this, we will, it will, get, it will give us, a, we will get to the next level of maturity. And we can do that without losing any of those things we all dear and make Equal Experts special. At Equal Experts, we have been 100% bootstrapped from day one. We have no debts, no outside shareholders, no private equity. And soon enough, in a couple of years, in 2025, no individual owners. The business will be owned by the network through a trust, and there will only be the people providing the service and the people needing that service, working together. I think this presents a great opportunity for all of us to genuinely pull our talents together and truly make the whole greater than the sum of the parts. I mean, this will not solve inflation, this will not stop the war in Ukraine or any other world crisis. But I think, if we go through this, it can make us feel more in control of our destiny. We can have more agency together to go through more feast and famine cycle and through more recession to come. And even if we do a really good job, even get through ChatGPT and the future of AI revolution. Thank you. <laughs>